The Reverend George Andrews II obtained a Bachelor of Arts and a major in religion from Trinity College after graduating from Phillips Academy in Andover, Massachusetts. He then continued by receiving a Master's in Divinity at Virginia Theological Seminary in 1971. He's been the headmaster for multiple schools across the country and currently works as the president of GE Andrews and Associates, providing consulting services and support to Episcopal schools, and once was the president of, go and go of the governing board of the National Association of Episcopal Schools. Thank you, Timmy. Good morning. George Andrews is, uh, is a revered head of school, former head of school. He is someone who we've heard from a couple of times in the last few years here, and I'm delighted that the vestry decided to invite him back, um, as George is really a good friend of mine. I got to know George at a program at Trinity College where the chaplain at Trinity College invited back graduates who were heads of school. And there were about 15 of us um, across the country, heads of various different schools, who came for a summer workshop. And George was working with the chaplain at the time and put on one of the, one of the most powerful uh, good sessions that I ever went to in professional development. We spent three days together. And since that time, George and I have really become good friends. And I would say trade emails almost every day, uh, some on mundane issues like the fate of the Red Sox, as we're both from the Boston area, but uh, others on leading schools and Episcopal schools. And uh, George and I get together in the summer and play some golf and actually managed to find uh, the opportunity to play some golf yesterday afternoon. But he's a very spiritual man, he's a great friend. He's here for us to kick off the Advent season, so please stand to greet my friend, the Reverend George Andrews. Thank you very, very much, and please be seated. Oh. Just on a personal note after, <laughs> uh, thank you, Timmy, and thank you, Mr. Clark, for that wonderful introduction. I must admit I'm reminded of one of my favorite stories about the Scottish preacher who had been invited to give a guest sermon, and after a very, very flowery introduction, got up into the pulpit and said, if I believed half of what I just heard about myself, even I could hardly wait to hear what I have to say. So on that note, um, but I did uh, this morning when I woke up and got dressed, and my apologies, I did put on my New England Patriots tie this morning, but I had a little friendly wager with Mr. Clark a dollar for the Eagles Patriots game and of course I won that dollar bill but in the true spirit of Advent I'd like to give this dollar bill back to Mr. Clark to contribute to Episcopal Academy so if I could have a round of applause for that please So what is Advent? What does it really mean? And what does it mean to me? And what does it mean to you, not only as an individual, but to you as a school community? I'd like to begin my remarks this morning by sharing with you a, a prayer which I find particularly meaningful for this time of the year. And I just ask you this morning in this time in this absolutely magnificent and sacred chapel of yours to open your own hearts and minds to hear what it is that God is speaking to you and to me and to all of us uh, here this morning. So I'd like to just ask you as you remain seated for a moment, please, to just bow your heads together with me. Oh God, our Father, we are preparing this morning to celebrate the birthday of your Son, 
Jesus Christ. While we recall his coming as a tiny baby in weakness and humility, may we be reminded that one day he will come in power and glory. We make this prayer to you this morning through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I want to, first of all, express my special thanks and appreciation to uh, Timmy Fries for contacting me and inviting me to be with you this morning on this special occasion. I really am truly delighted to be with you, and as I indicated, I would like to invite you to think with me, first of all, what does Advent mean? And I'd like to share with you what it means to me, and I would like to invite you to think about and reflect upon what it means to you and to you as a school community here at Episcopal Academy. What does Advent mean? Well, first of all, the word Advent comes from the Latin adventus, meaning arrival or coming, particularly of something of great or significant importance. The focus of the Advent season is the celebration of the birth of Jesus the Christ in the first advent and the anticipation of the return of Christ the King in his second advent. That's what the Christian faith proclaims. Advent is more than simply a marking of an event which took place 2,000 years ago. It's celebrating a truth about God the revelation, the revealing of God in Christ whereby all of creation, all of creation might be reconciled and brought together to God. That is a process that we now participate in and the consummation of which we anticipate in the future, at least in terms of the Christian faith. So it has a double focus. It looks back to the past, to the birth of Jesus, and it looks to the future. For Advent symbolizes the spiritual journey of individuals and a community or a congregation. As they affirm that Christ has come, that he is present in the world today, and that he will come again in the future. That acknowledgement, at least for me, that acknowledgement provides a basis for what I refer to as holy living, holy living, which arises from a profound sense that I live in between times, in between times, and that God is calling me to be a faithful steward of the gifts and talents that he has entrusted or given to me. So as the church, as the Christian church, celebrates God's inbreaking into history and the incarnation or the birth of Jesus and anticipates a future consummation to that history, it also confesses its own responsibility, and this is the part that Uh, at least speaks to me, it's responsibility, my responsibility, to love the Lord, the God, Lord God, with all my heart, and to love my neighbor as myself. So Advent is a spiritual season of preparation in which Christians make themselves ready for the coming or the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ and they also anticipate his coming again. Advent is marked by a spirit of expectation, anticipation, preparation. But most important, what 
at least for me, what does Advent really mean to me? And what do I hope and pray it might mean for you as individuals and as a school community? Thanks to Timmy's invitation and the opportunity to be with you this morning, I must confess that I'm more aware than ever that Advent is a unique and special opportunity for me to prepare myself spiritually for the birth of Jesus and to prepare myself for the time when Jesus returns as Christ the King to prepare my own spiritual life, to prepare through reflection, prayer, and practice my own personal response to God's call to me to love the Lord my God with all my heart and to love my neighbor as myself. In order to prepare myself to live now, to live today, this week, this Advent, more fully into God's call to love him with all my heart and to love my neighbor as myself, I am going to strive to do two things to prepare myself spiritually this Advent season. Let me just step back and say why I believe preparation is so important in our lives. Seniors, I suspect you are, with great anticipation, looking forward to your graduation uh, next spring. I am looking forward with great anticipation to my 50th class reunion from Andover. And we have things to do to prepare ourselves for that. But I'm reminded that My father died of cancer when I was five years old. I was the youngest of three children. My mother was 36 years old at the time. And seven years later, my mother happily remarried again. And when we moved, we moved across the street from a home which had a tennis court. And although I loved all sports growing up, I had never played tennis. But my older sister had a very dear friend, and his name was George Douse, and he took me and my best friend at age 12, and he basically devoted two summers to teaching us not only how to play tennis, but to get involved in tournaments. And he taught me not only a tremendous amount about the mechanics of tennis, but he also taught me a tremendous amount about sportsmanship. But the one thing that I remember so well is that as he taught me, he never allowed me to go out on the court to hit balls back and forth with him or my friend until I had hit 50 forehands in a row against this backboard and 50 backhands in a row against the backboard. I had to do that every time before we ever went out on the court. Well, you can imagine that I was actually very, very well prepared. I learned that discipline. And I kept on doing it throughout all of the time that I was ever involved in any kind of competitive tennis or any other sport. But my point for my spiritual life, it made me realize and appreciate even more the necessity to prepare, to get ready, to plan ahead. Mr. Clark took me over yesterday and we watched a couple of the basketball practices going on, the girls and the boys. And as I watched, I thought to myself, they're preparing for the season. They're learning the plays. They're learning what they have to do to be successful. So what is it that I hope to prepare in my own life this Advent to make the celebration of Jesus' birth more meaningful. There are two things I want to just briefly touch on. One comes from, I know at each of your pews there's a red prayer book. I'm not asking you to take it out, but in the Book of Common Prayer in the Episcopal Church, in the baptismal service, there's something called the baptismal covenant. And in the baptismal covenant there's a question which I am going to be asking myself and 
I would invite you to consider it as well. For me, it's a very probing and very profound question. And the question is, will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? In other words, when I look at you, will I seek Christ in you? Will I look to find the good in you as a person? Will I seek to encourage you and to build you up when I look at you? Will I seek to call forth in you the potential that I know you have? Will I seek to serve your needs? Will I seek to help you, to support you? Will I, and I love this phrase from St. Paul, will I seek to speak the truth in love in my relationship with you and those around me? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? The second thing I strive to implement and apply in my life is a phrase which comes from the colic for the first Sunday of Advent. And with Mr. Clark's advisees this morning, he asked me to give them a quotation. And the quotation that I gave them is the one I'd like to share with you here this morning from the colic for the first Sunday of Advent. And it goes like this. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on, to put on the armor of light. I'm going to strive to examine carefully and prayerfully those dark places in my own life. Those dark relationships those dark attitudes that I have, those dark behaviors. I'm going to carefully and prayerfully, God willing, cast away those works of darkness and put on the armor of light. I have a very dear friend who I've been doing some mentoring with. We've had a situation recently occur in which he feels as though I have betrayed him. Have you ever had a friend tell you that they feel as though they've betrayed you? Believe me, you're left with an incredibly empty, empty feeling. And I just pray this Advent season that I can take that relationship and cast away the darkness and bring back the armor of light. I have another person that I love very dearly who feels as though they've been dishonored by me. Has anyone ever told you that they feel you have dishonored them? Again, talk about a dark feeling. So again, I just hope and pray that during this Advent season I can cast away this darkness and put on the armor of light. I believe that God is calling me and calling you into holy living now, and that God is calling you and me to be faithful stewards of the talents and gifts that he has entrusted and given to each one of us as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus and to prepare for his return as Christ the King. To seek and serve him in all persons and to put on the armor of light. And finally, what do I hope and pray Advent means to you as individuals and as a school community? Advent's a time of preparation that is marked by prayer. And so I have a prayer which I want to read to you this morning, and there's a portion of the prayer which I want to focus on briefly and ask you to uh, please consider for your own lives and your life together. 
This prayer is taken from a collection called A Cycle of Prayer for Episcopal Schools, and the prayer is entitled A Prayer for Schools. And again, I just please invite you to listen carefully uh, to these words. Ever giving God, we lift our hearts to you in thanksgiving for the life we share in this school, Episcopal Academy. We thank you for work to do, things to learn and understand, games to play, and loving friends. But here's the punchline, which is most appropriate for this Advent season. Teach us to pay attention to each other, that in our care and peacefulness we might grow together in true humanity. Make this place, Episcopal Academy, a sign a sacred sign of your call to all people to join together in a beloved community. How can you better pay attention? I can't answer that for you. You have to answer it for yourselves. But let me give you just a couple of quick examples. Quick show of hands, who besides me has a birthday in the month of December? Okay, hold them up high. We're proud. We're proud. All right. Thank you. My point is simply this. Birthdays are wonderful. Recognize, celebrate with those that you love, your friends. Wish them a happy birthday. Tell them how delighted you are for them. And even if you don't know the person, say happy birthday to them. My point is simply pay attention. Or what about a classmate or a schoolmate here who has accomplished something significant, who has achieved something noteworthy? Do you know, and I think you do, you've experienced it, I know I have experienced, how much it means when a faculty member or a student congratulates you and recognizes you for something that you have done or accomplished? So I pray that you'll pay attention, not only during this Advent season, but always, to recognize the accomplishments and achievements of your classmates and schoolmates. I can't tell you how much it meant to me at Trinity College when a particular professor would write thank you notes and congratulations to me when I did something of meaning or importance. Or what about simply a compliment whether you know the person or not. Mr. Clark and I walked in here yesterday and things were in a bit of uh, disarray, shall we say, but now the poinsettias and everything look absolutely spectacular. And I met Andrew Janetta and Mark Washington who are in here with their mothers arranging everything. And if there are others that came later and I missed, I apologize, but wow, they've done an amazing job. Or is there somebody you know who is currently sick or ill, or do you have a grandparent or a parent who's hospitalized? Pay attention. Reach out. Offer your love. And the last thing I want to say, I had a very powerful experience recently. I was visiting the daughter of a very dear friend, and she's new in the admissions department at Episcopal High School in Alexandria, Virginia. And she took me on a tour of the school. And as we walked around, I was so struck by the number of times she stopped to introduce me to students that she knew. But what really touched me is we ended up our tour by going into the dining hall. And there was a young student, a girl, and she was sitting on a bench, and she looked kind of like this. It was, it was obvious that she was in pain. Something was going on in her life. And my friend's daughter, Helen Woolworth, I'll never forget this, she walked over to this student, just put her hand on her shoulder, and whatever she said to her, was simply a word that she had noticed and that she cared 
and that she'd reached out. Pay attention. You will grow together, my friends, in true humanity, and you will make this sacred place, Episcopal Academy, a sign of God's call to join together in a beloved community. And so this Advent season, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus and anticipate his return as Christ the King, may God give each one of us the grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light, to pay attention to one another, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, and to love our neighbor as ourselves, to love one another. Amen.